Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 130. Welcome to EntrepreneurOnFire.com, where remarkable entrepreneurs share their inspiring story. Let their journey illuminate your path to success. And now, your host, John Dumas. Fire Nation, you asked for it and I created it. My first free ebook, 10 Incredible Insights from 10 Incredible Entrepreneurs is published, all four pages of it. Simply go to eofire.com and subscribe to my newsletter. You will get immediate access to the top business insights from the likes of Barbara Corcoran, Tim Ferriss, Gary Vaynerchuk, and seven other incredible guests. Prepare to ignite. Okay, let's get started. I am simply ecstatic to introduce my guest today, Nellie Akelp. Nellie, are you prepared to ignite? John, I am. Awesome. Nellie is the CEO and founder of CorpNet.com, her second legal document filing service company based on the simple philosophy of truth in business and her sincere passion to assist small business owners and entrepreneurs in America to get their business off the ground in a fast, reliable, and affordable manner. Given Fire Nation a little overview, Nelly, but why don't you take a minute, tell us about yourself. We want to get to know you personally, and then tell us about your business. John, thank you again for having me on today. As John mentioned, I am the CEO and founder of CorpNet.com. CorpNet.com is a document filing service whereby we're a small business helping small business owners start businesses, whether it be simply coming to us to register a business name, incorporating a business, or filing an LLC, or for those business owners who already have an existing business but would like CorpNet.com to assist them in maintaining their business in good standing. Uh, A little bit of background on myself. This is my second document filing service. I have been in this industry for, oh my God, well over 10 years. My first company um, was a document filing service uh, whereby we founded it in 1997, grew it to where it was doing about a million dollars in gross sales. Uh, got acquired by a publicly traded company, took three years off, focused on the family, and then decided, you know what, we were not done and we didn't want to retire. We were too young to retire and decided to come back and start it all over again in 2009 with our current business, CorpNet.com. What an exciting journey, Nellie, and I'm excited to delve even more so into that later in the interview. But before we do, Let's talk now about your favorite success quote. Entrepreneur on Fire loves to get that motivational ball rolling at the top of every show with our guest favorite success quote. It lets us kind of peek into your mind a little bit, get to know your mentality. Share with us what you have. My favorite success quote is, if you do work that you love and work that fulfills you, the rest will come. Wow, that's a great quote, Nelly. Who do we attribute that to? You know, my mentor, my role model, someone who I've uh, always followed as a, you know, as, as, as ever I can imagine when I was 13 years old is Oprah Winfrey. I love her energy. I love what she stands for and what she represents both as a, you know, entrepreneur and as a, a woman entrepreneur. And this is, you know, I took this from her, you know, it's one of her quotes and uh, it's very inspirational to me and very close to my heart. And how would you say, if you could take us down to the ground level, that you apply this quote, this mentality to your everyday life? You know, I believe success is something you achieve based on how much you put into whatever it is that you would like to see success from. And certainly others can help you along your journey, just as others can provide obstacles as well. But ultimately, you make your own success and your own failures. And what I know for sure is that if you want to have success, and be successful, you can't make success your goal. The key is not to worry about being successful, but to instead work toward, you know, being significant in your community and to the nation, you know, and success will naturally flow from that and follow. You know, if you have the vision, the drive, and the determination, and, you know, if you immerse yourself into whatever it is that you're trying to do, you can and will ultimately accomplish the goal in the face of any obstacle or challenge challenge and you know the rest will come and that for me in and of itself is success powerful 
So Nellie, let's transition now to our next topic, which is failure, which are obstacles or challenges that as entrepreneurs, we face every single day. I want you to take us back to some time in your journey, Nellie, where you failed or where you came up against an obstacle that you had to overcome and then share with us how you overcame that failure, that obstacle. Well, what I'd like to do first of all is provide five tips for failure because I think this will really help you know, other entrepreneurs existing or people who are on the verge of starting their own business to kind of help them in that process of how someone sees failure and maybe to try to change their mindset. And here's the five. Well, I love numbered lists. So just give me one second. Let me get my typing fingers ready. Go. Sure. So the first one is that one, I never see failure as failure, but only as a learning experience. Um, Number two, You know, I never see failure as failure, but only as the negative feedback I need to change in my course of direction in my small business. Number three is that I never see failure as failure, but only as the opportunity to develop my sense of humor. Number four is that I never see failure as failure, but only as an opportunity to practice my techniques and perfect my performance. And number five, which is my favorite, is that I never see failure as failure, but only as the game I must play to win. Nellie, that's a great list of five things you just shared with us. Thank you for doing that. Now take us down to the ground level. Share with us a time that you failed or that you came against an obstacle that you really just had to overcome and share with us how you overcame that. You know, it was about a year ago, uh, actually, uh, probably in about November of uh, this time last year, whereby my current business it was just consistently losing money hand over fist, and we were just not being profitable, and we had to consistently pour funds, you know, from our personal savings account and invest into the business to, you know, keep the business afloat. And, you know, we really in our heart believed, you know, that there was a light at the end of the tunnel. So I think for me, that was my biggest challenge. And really, that was kind of my moment of like, oh, my God, I'm failing. And how could I be failing? Because I've done this before, you know. So what am I doing wrong? Why is it that it it was working for me 10 years ago and it's not working now? And continue on with that journey, Nelly. What was it that turned that corner and that you really realized okay, this is what I was doing wrong, and how did you make it right? In a nutshell, listening to colleagues, outside consultants, my business manager, my financial manager, and as a result, making some serious hardcore changes to our current business, well, to our then current business model that really I was very resistant to making, you know, and it was uncomfortable. It was taking me out of my comfort zone. It was making, you know, it was as a result, making me do things that I wasn't comfortable in 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 following as a new model but as a result you know the lessons that I learned from it was that you know what got me here as a result of the paths and actions I followed with my old business model is not going to necessarily get me to where I want to go with my current business and I learned that you know you have to have humility you have to be flexible and you have to not be so resistant to making changes, you know, because again, um, what you may have done in the past, you know, uh, with an with an old business is not going to necessarily going to get you, you know, to where you want to go with a current business model. And, you know, especially with the landscape of our economic situation and, you know, our, our nation. So that that's really what I learned from it. There are so many incredible insights from what you just said, Nelly. For one, you just reached out to mentors, to clients, to customers, to friends for advice and for feedback. That is so hard for some entrepreneurs to do, but it's so valuable. It's the Eric Reese Lean Startup Method philosophy of just getting that product out there, getting feedback as quickly as possible so you can adjust to the current times, to the current demands of the customer base that's out there. And you were able to do that. And then another thing that you said that I just wanted to latch onto because I love is that you were afraid to push the envelope to get outside of your comfort zone. And as entrepreneurs, we truly need to be living outside of our comfort zone because that's when we know that we're really pushing the envelope, that we're learning, that we're maturing, that we're making mistakes because it's only when we make mistakes that we're really able to improve off of our current product. So 
That was just an incredible amount of great insight. I thank you for sharing that with Fire Nation. And it's a perfect lead-in to our next topic, which is the aha moment. Because just like as entrepreneurs, we failed and we faced challenges, we've also had these great inspirational light bulbs that have just gone off and we said, wow, this is going to resonate so well with my target audience, with who I want to connect with. Nellie, share with us a time in your journey when you had an aha moment and how you turned that moment into success. My aha moment was once I made changes to my then current business model last year, and and really, you know, I, I, it, it's still in effect for us. I mean, for us, changes are happening on 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 the fly, day by day, because as an entrepreneur, John, you have to make you know you have to release make changes quickly in order to see if it's being successful or if you're going to fail quickly okay so launch so to fail quickly or launch and see amazing results as a as a, you know as a result of the changes you've made so for me you know my aha moment was when i made the changes to my then business model structure i started seeing everything fall into place and i've seen that as a successful path for me, you know, fast forwarding to this year. So it, 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 it really was like, wow, you know what? Um, I listened, I, I took note, I implemented, and, you know, as a result, I'm seeing positive changes with the business happen. Nellie, have you had an I've made it moment? You know, it, it, that's, that's a tough question, John. Yeah, because- it definitely is. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I, I would say, you know, I, as an entrepreneur, you have so many I've made it moments, but, and, and, it, and as a, as a simple, you know, response to your question, yeah, I've, I've had many I've made it moments, but as an entrepreneur, again, one minute you're making it and one minute you're like, oh my God, what did I just do? So, true. so it's such a bumpy road that I can't really say I've I've had one I've made it moment. I mean, of course, my I've made it moment was when I sold my last company for over twenty million dollars to a publicly traded company. I mean, that's as 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 I've made it as you can get. Yeah. But you know, for me, um, you know, after the sale of that company it was uh, it was a rather emotional process for me because you know it was my baby. I built it from ground up, so it, it you know it was hard for me to kind of let go and. Um, so, you know, when I when I opened my current business, you know, when I launched my current business, you know, that that kind of put things into place for me and kind of set the tone for where I wanted to go. And with this one, you know, it's like I've made it, but there's bumpy roads, you know. It's like one day you've made it, the next minute you're like, okay, should I change X, Y, or Z? So, you know, it, it, if, as an entrepreneur, you got to have the stomach because it's a, it's a bumpy ride, you know. So... I hope that answers it. <laughs> it does. And you nailed it too. It's a roller coaster. I mean, you need to be able to sustain the highs and ride out the lows because yep. you're always just going to be going up and down and up and down. So you just can't ever dwell too long in either one of them. You can't celebrate your successes too much and you can't bemoan your failures too often because you're going to have plenty of each. And it's yeah. really just trying to even out that bumpier as much as possible just to keep that level head and to keep driving forward. So, I totally yeah. get where you're coming from. I love your philosophy. Thank you. Thank you. And again, as I mentioned, you know, the goal with an entrepreneur, in my opinion, is to launch quickly, fail quickly, because you have to have the stomach to, and, and, and if you're in a business where you're pretty invested in, like we are, you know, if you want that business to succeed, you have to have that mentality that, you know what, we're going to change the course of action and we're going to be very proactive about it because we want to see quick results, quick changes, quick results. And if those quick results are that you're failing at that particular, you know, action that you're embarking on, you want to change the game plan as soon as you can so that you don't continue to lose money. Well, let me put you on the spot here for a second, Nelly. What was something that you've recently launched or implemented and then quickly realized that it was a failure or it needed to be withdrawn? So that failed fast. Uh, pricing model with our uh, business and initially when we launched a business you know we came out in a time whereby 
you know, we were at the height of the recession in 2009. So what we did was we came out with a single package whereby we were offering a single package at a single price and we like literally within a couple of weeks realized that no, we got to offer different selections and different packages and options to our clientele because the current state, the, the current small business owner, the, the current consumer wants choices and wants options. And initially when I had launched the business, you know, I had literally followed the models and kind of the things that were ingrained in my head with my old business and I thought it was going to work. And quickly we realized that no, it's not. You know, we got to offer choices and options to the current consumer because it's all about, you know, um, what, what, the consum what can the consumer get uh, with with wh who, sorry, what can they get as as their biggest bang for the buck? You know, with the best customer service by spending the less amount. You know, and um, when we changed the model, it it was really exciting for us. You know, and and it's been an exciting road for us. Can you know continuously for the last three years because even with that initial launch of coming out with three packages. You know, our pricing model um, was not really where we wanted it to be. So we made a change to our pricing model um, last year, you know, and that for us was really super exciting because immediately when we made the price increase, we actually saw a 22%, I think it was like 25, I'm sorry, I'm going to round, like probably 25 to 30% incline in sales, you know, and again, you know, we're in a time with this economic climate that, you know, people are not really, you know, uh, responding well to price increases. But, you know, with our current business, you know, it was a positive uh, change in the positive direction for us. And it was really exciting to us to see that. There have just been some fascinating studies over the past years about pricing models. And there's just some simple facts that everybody should take note of. There are just some people that are always going to want to buy the most expensive option offered. And then there's a second set of people that are not excited about taking the lowest option, so they're always gonna settle in the middle ones. And then there's other set of people who just love taking the cheapest options. They feel like they're getting the best value out of that. So by offering options, Nelly, you are giving these three different sects of people the option to fulfill what they want and what they need. And when you offer just one price, you're not giving any of these people those options that they want. So, I mean, I can definitely see where that happens and why you got that increase. Thank you. Thank you. So let's move in right now to your current business, Nelly. Uh -huh. Let's talk about one thing that's really exciting you right now at CorpNet. The tremendous, I would say it's the tremendous amount of opportunity that lies ahead for us in such a highly commoditized market that is so oversaturated and, and really, it's at the point of maturity. But for us, you know, um, and when I say us, it's really for my, you know, my, my husband slash business partner, Phil A. Kalp, and myself are the co-owners of uh, Corpnet.com. And, you know, we're truly excited about the opportunity because we see a, 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 a hole in the market whereby it allows us to come in and offer new products and services to you know, the business to the small business owner that really none of the competition is really doing out there right now. So it's really exciting for me, especially because um, it, it, it allows us to market ourselves um, as a niche, you know, in, in, you know, in such a, again, highly saturated um industry that you know we've we've entered into so i'm really excited about it i'm excited about what lies ahead and the products and services that we have that are about to launch and i think truly from from a small business owner standpoint it, it's gonna really take off a lot of hassle off their plate when when they see what you know uh, we're about to launch to them because it's really going to take a lot of um, you know, paperwork, hassle, and a lot of follow-up that they would have to do in, you know, keeping their small business afloat and, you know, in compliance. 
Nelly, it's always exciting when you spot a niche. Like, for instance, with Entrepreneur on Fire, I really felt like I found a niche where there was just not enough content being produced on a daily basis for those daily commuters, for those people that were working out every single day that just wanted some fresh content, inspiring content from stories and journeys of people like yourself, inspiring and successful entrepreneurs who have been there and done that and have great lessons to share. And you're finding your niches in your industry, and that's just an exciting place to be. And that's a perfect lead into our next segment, which is the lightning round. And this is where I get to ask you a series of questions, Nelly, and you come back at us, Fire Nation, with amazing and mind-blowing answers. Does that sound like a plan? I'd love that. (laughs) All right. What was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? I would say what was holding me back is the risk of owning your own business versus the stability of having a nine to five job. However, you know, when you look at it, there is really no stability in having a job because you can get fired at any time. So really, when it comes down to it, to have true job security, you know, you have to become your own, you know, you have, you know, you have to start your own business and really, you know, entrepreneurship in my opinion, was the best route to go. (laughs) What's the best business advice you ever received? Do more of the things that you like and enjoy doing and are good at and delegate the ones that are at the bottom of your list to others because those things that are at the bottom of your list may be, you know, a favorite of another person's. So, you know, at the end of the day, when you delegate your least favorite task to others, then you know, you'll, you'll have success all around because you're doing what you like and you're most effective at, and then what you're delegating to others, they're doing, and they're doing it because they're effective at it and they love it. And then at the end of the day, as a whole, the business becomes more successful. What do you regret doing or not doing at some point in your journey? And what lesson did you learn from that? Not acting upon what I, I was being told by mentors and colleagues as, as, as fast as I should have, you know, and not listening and acting upon it as quickly as I should have, that I would say that's my biggest regret. Do you have an internet resource like an Evernote that you're just in love with that you can share with Fire Nation? You know, I'm really big with social media and I and I love social media and I like engaging uh, and networking with people. So for me, my biggest internet resource is Hootsuite because that's how I engage in social media. And, you know, I, I, I'm often, you know, very active on Twitter and Facebook and some of the other social media. And so I would say that's something that I really enjoy um, sharing with your listeners. It's a huge time saver. If you could recommend a book for Fire Nation, what would it be? Oh, that's easy. Uh, my favorite all-time business book is Delivering Happiness by Tony Say. He's the CEO of Zappos.com. He's a true inspiration to me, and his book, Delivering Happiness, has really helped me in you know my you know in in operating my daily business and really helping me for for kind of seeing where the business is at and changing direction quickly. So Nelly, this is the last question, but it's my favorite. It's tricky. So take your time, digest it, then come back at us with an answer. Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, identical to earth, but you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have. Your food and shelter is taken care of, but all you have is a laptop and $500. What would you do in the next seven days? Well, number one, I would definitely sign back up on Hootsuite and, you know, (laughs) that's the first thing I would do because that's literally the quickest way and the fastest way and with zero dollars to get back up, you know, uh, online and really engage with your small business community. I mean, if you're a small business owner. So for me, that would be the quickest way for myself to get out there and really network with a bunch of people to kind of promote what I know and how I can help them. And then I would say, you know, once I started doing that and kind of getting some money underneath my belt, you know, and and getting people to kind of sign on, I would literally uh, probably start back up um, with Corpnet.com, my current business. And the reason why is because um, 
you know, I, I believe in what I do uh, and I'm very passionate about it. And um, it's just that I probably wouldn't start it and use, you know, I would, I would probably start back up again, but I would start it with the new models and new recommendations that all my colleagues and mentors are giving to me. So, but in, I mean, it's, it, that's a simple question for me and, and maybe it's because I, I truly love and enjoy what I do. You know, I, I would do it all over again in a, in a heartbeat. Well, Nellie, you're one of the lucky ones and you've given us some great actionable advice this entire interview and we are all better for it. Give Fire Nation one parting piece of guidance, then give yourself a plug and then we'll say goodbye. Absolutely. So if you're a small business owner that's, you know, on the brink of wanting to start your own business or making your business dreams into a reality, my suggestion to anyone out there is, again, do what you love and start with something that you love to do and that you're passionate about doing and really believe in doing because with that, sky's the limit. And once you're ready to actually take the next steps of getting the business legal, of course, reach out to us at www.corpnet.com and we can take the hassle and do all the paper filings for you. So you can do what you do best, which is spending more time with your family and focusing on growing your business. Powerful. Nellie, Thank you for being so generous with your time, expertise, with your knowledge. Fire Nation salutes you, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you, John. Thank you for having me on your show. Okay, Fire Nation. Are you inspired enough to start your entrepreneurial journey? I've created a free step-by-step -step video that will walk you through the process of buying your domain, installing WordPress, and creating your first post all in under seven minutes. Visit entrepreneuronfire.com slash blue to find out more and take your entrepreneurial leap today. Thank you for joining us at entrepreneuronfire.com, your daily dose of inspiration. Prepare to ignite.